Hello out there. Uh, as everyone knows, winter's coming. So in the fall, I usually uh, build a, quite a few of these little custom-made 20-pound uh, propane tank wood stoves. And I do have some other videos on this, uh, which I'll put some links to at the end of this one. But I want to actually walk you through how I actually built this one. So if you're interested in doing the kind of same thing yourself, uh, you can probably follow along and get some good ideas from it. Uh, this is a custom job that I did for someone and it's based on a beaver float plane actually. Uh, the stove turned out really, really nice. I'm really happy with that. I don't even want to give it to the guy actually to be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I'll walk you through the whole build here and you can see exactly how it's done. I really went nuts with this stove just because I like the theme of it. I recently got into flying uh, RC model airplanes so when this was requested of me I was kind of like uh, thinking this was going to be pretty cool so really went nuts with it. but. Um, the cone here and the prop uh, are all handmade. Uh, the cone itself is just made from a piece of aluminum that I had, aluminum stock. And I worked it on my little lathe uh, to get this uh, nice uh, cone shape on it and then polished it out. I also drilled a hole in the back of it and threaded a rod into the back. Um, the prop is plasma cut out of a 3 16 plate. Again, I used the wooden templates to do so. Um, if you want to check out how I build these templates, I have a video on wooden templates that you should really get involved with and uh, that'll really help you out as well. But uh, just after some grinding and polishing and cursing, uh, I got the prop into some kind of shape that I like and uh, I fit it into the door. Uh, it's a multi-piece unit and I use a spring to keep it all tied together. But essentially, since the prop here is locked to this back swinging plate. It allows me to actuate it just by turning the prop itself. You can see that I drilled the three holes in the bottom, kind of supposed to look like an airplane engine or something like that. And uh, as you turn the prop, you get more air into the stove or less. Um, the latch for the door is just a piece of rod which I've also machined a little handle here that's supposed to look like an airplane throttle and you're just literally lifting up on that and swinging your door open and shut. It's just got a little hook here that it sits in. Nothing too fancy there. Uh, the legs for this thing are pretty awesome. I'll show you how I built those next. The idea here was to have these mimic the float plane floats that you would typically see on an old beaver or something like that. Um, tried to kind of mimic the structure as far as the supports. Um, the floats themselves I also made using wooden templates and just going from pictures and what I've seen on the internet kind of thing. Uh, I drew them out on the wood and I started by cutting these side pieces out. They're all welded together. It's actually one, two, three, four, five different pieces. Uh, you can see on the bottom here they actually have a little V shape and the back is actually set back just like a float should be. All just tack welded together. Um, obviously this thing isn't going to float <laughs> but uh, sure gives an awesome look. Uh, I also just put a couple little uh, bungs in the back here and that's what the back tip is actually sitting on because of the angle of these floats. It also allows you to bolt this thing down to stop it from moving around if you had it in say some kind of hunting shock or something like that that might be on wheels. Also took the time to squeeze this round bar just to make it kind of have that aerodynamic shape a little more interesting. Again you don't have to go nuts like this on a wood stove but these little propane wood stoves uh, will heat an ice shock or something of that size no problem. Alright, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's get back to basics here. Forgot some important things. When you're choosing your propane tank, choose one that hasn't been recertified because that means it's been painted again. And I don't know if you've noticed here, but I sandblast the tanks to get this paint off. You can do the same thing with a wire wheel, whatever paint stripper. Clean your tank off. I uh, pull the valves out and then I turn the tanks upside down. And I let them sit like this for probably about a month usually, which is unnecessary, but since propane is heavier than air, um, it all runs out the bottom of the tank. 
Then before I actually go ahead and cut these or anything, I fill them up with water and I'll dump them and then fill them up with water again. So that way you're ensured that there's no propane and you don't go kaboom when you try and weld or cut on this thing. Now this is the back of the stove. So I'll just cut this flange off, plug this bung, and then I would use this as the front of the stove. So for someone that's gonna do this at home, that's very important information. The next thing I'm gonna go into is how to make the ring that the chimney goes into. Now I make these rings out of just eighth inch by two inch steel flat bar and I hand bend it. I know you could just go find a four inch pipe and cut slices off it and it'd be easier but kind of work with what I have here and you saw there I'm just using a hammer to rough it out. Now the trick to this is I have this cone and it's from an old brake lathe so after I welded that ring together it's still not perfect so I use that cone and I pound it through there and that's how I end up with a nice ring. All right, so you got your ring made. Now you want to fit it to the stove. And you're kind of thinking, how the hell am I going to do that? Well, if you use this little trick I'm going to show you here, it makes it a lot easier. And really all you're doing is using a straight edge to mark from the tank to the edge of the ring. Uh, I first tack that ring on there just to hold it in place. I work my way around with the permanent marker, draw up a line, and then I just cut that line and weld the uh, ring to the tank and you're good to go. Alright, don't fo focus on all this fancy crap right now. Let's just focus on the door. So if you wanted to make yourself a door, um, what you first have to do is cut this disc out of a piece of steel. This happens to be one eighth inch th thick, but you can use whatever you have around. I again use a wooden template uh, since I do make quite a few of these. Uh, this is my door template. And uh, just plasma cut it out. Uh, the next thing I do is build a hinge. Now the hinge is all revolves around 3 eighths rod and 3 eighths tubing. The rod I just cut chunks off and then basically make a simple hinge out of it. I cut a little bit of a notch in the door so that the center part of this hinge isn't actually touching the door. And then uh, I like to trim them out with some round bar. It just makes it for a nice neat appearance. Uh, kind of makes it look a little more professional. And then the uh, hinge is just welded. The fat part is just welded to the inside of this flange. And I throw a little extra weld right down to the tank just to reinforce it a little bit. Well, that's the basic walkthrough of the stove. I uh, hope you got some kind of useful information out of that. Uh, obviously, I still need to paint it. I use a stove, high heat stove paint, paint them black, and I'll leave some of these polished parts uh, shiny and just let them rust even. I, I don't mind the look of rust personally. But uh, really, really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, kind of dreading calling the guy that it's going to. I kind of want to keep it for myself. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I have to think about that one. Anyways. Thanks for watching and uh, have fun.